This video is brought to you by Nike Soccer Camps held at Alvernia University. Join the most winningest coach in Alvernia University men's soccer history along with other high-level coaches and players to receive top-level training and advice that will not only improve your game while you're there, but will also help you in your team and individual training moving forward. Don't miss out on this opportunity. To find out more info and how to sign up, check out the link in the description down below. Let's get into the interview with Casey Moore. Okay, so next question we're going over is, are there any red flags a player can give off when you're considering them for your program, even if they're technically gifted or they have a lot of ability? You know, is there anything that they can do or display that will cause you not to pursue them at all? Yeah, so unfortunately, there's a lot of red flags, and college coaches are looking at everything. So they're mm -hmm. assessing not only a player's ability to play, um, but they're assessing character and who that person is because they want to make sure they're bringing in the right type of person for their program and somebody that's not going to disrupt what they're trying to build and the culture they have there. So, I mean, red flags are, are definitely, you know, people of poor character, guys with bad attitudes, you know, really bad body language, demonstrative personalities. Yeah. So, you know, you got somebody that is demonstrative towards their teammates or even against their opponents or refs or other coaches. Um, and those, those even, are the main, even if they're technically gifted, like that's just Yeah, I mean, so, I mean it. It, it varies by program, but like for us specifically, we recruit based off who the person is and their ability. So, you know, if you have somebody that's unbelievable at soccer but has a bad attitude or bad character, for us, that's somebody that we don't want. Yeah. Um, and we've ruled people out because of that. But, um, you know, I would say people are aware of, of being a good person and doing the yeah. right things, uh, as you should say. And, um, you know, obviously we, we value the person's character and who they are. So we, we look at all that stuff and a lot of college teams do. I figure most good college programs have a similar yeah, idea I mean, on that. You, yeah. if, you, if you try to take one over the other or value one, if you value somebody being a really good soccer player, mm -hmm. but then they have a bad, you know, a, a bad person or bad character, yeah. They can bring the whole team down or you know have exactly. negative thoughts that seep into other people's minds so we we try to do away with that and we're pretty thorough with our recruiting process to kind of weed those guys out yeah that's what i thought all right so next question i have is what is the difference in level going from say the high school game you know youth soccer club soccer to college and then even beyond that to the pro levels what would you say is are some of the biggest differences between each yeah, so when you move up that system, I mean, I feel like every aspect of the game gets better. So, I mean, that sounds a little bit obvious, but things I would say more specifically, I really think speed of play increases the, the, as you move up the chain. Um, you need to have a lot quicker speed of thought. You have to know what you want to do with the ball, and you have to move the ball a lot quicker because the space is really minimalized when you get up into the pro levels and the pressure is really, really intense. So you're gonna be playing under high pressure with almost no space and you, you need to be able to do that at a real high rate. And if you don't, it's it's gonna be a turnover. Yeah. yeah, so um, speed of play and, and thought is huge. And I mean, things like dedication, commitment level, fitness levels, those yeah. are those are really, really increased when you get to the pro level. I mean, these guys are now getting paid to play the game, so they have to truly take care of their health and their bodies. And their whole life's dedicated. Yeah, so point. now, yeah. you know, their whole life and whole day is dedicated to being uh, a great soccer player or, or trying to make themselves a better player mm -hmm. throughout throughout the day. You know, they have that kind of that motto that they need to get better every day. And I know college programs try to force that upon players, but uh, you know, in college, there's a lot of other responsibilities that are that are yeah. coming about, and um, players aren't always truly, They're truly not doing committed all they and dedicated to yeah. to living almost a professional lifestyle in college. It's kind of a good point, though, because then the players that do decide to live that way can start to stand out and start, you know, playing better in the game and maybe go beyond the college level if they start dedicating themselves in college a little bit more. Yeah, and I, yeah. I think a lot of players truly don't make it because they don't ever fully commit themselves or dedicate themselves mm -hmm. to get to that level. Like, you'll hear players talk about, 
how they would love to be a pro player. Well, there is a lot that goes into being a pro player, a lot of commitment, a lot of sacrifices that if you don't make them, you might not make it to that level. Yeah. So it, it can be that cut and dry, but you have to dedicate a ton of your time to, to getting better basically every single day. Like what are you doing today to improve yourself so you're better tomorrow and so on and so forth. Yeah. All right, so next question we have is, at, in the college level you have pretty much all good to great players. There aren't really too many bad players in the college game, but what can a player do who's either just come into a program or is currently in a program, um, what can they do to have an impact or be one of those standout players to do that little bit extra to have influence in matches and actually you know, have influence on the team results over a season? Well, they, they have to come in and work as hard as they possibly can. Um, and they have to be committed to the cause, committed to the team. Um, but, you know, on top of that, they, they have to bring their qualities to the team and not shy away because they're a younger guy. So, mm -hmm. you know, if we brought you in because you're a great finisher, like you have to show us you're a great finisher in our training. And when you get opportunities in games, you got to take those chances. Yeah. Um, the you know, coaches recruit and bring players in to make an impact, and coaches really want those players to make an impact. Um, so, it's both the coach and the player want the same thing. Mutually beneficial. Yeah. So um, it's really you know down to that work rate, that commitment, and and bringing your strengths mm -hmm. into the side immediately. So don't um, shy away, you know, play Don't your shy game. away, play how, how you play. You were recruited to play how you play and bring your, your best attributes into that team right away. I think a lot of freshmen come in and they're tentative about the situation. They consider themselves as freshmen instead of as part the of the team. Right, yeah. And sometimes they don't show their best until halfway through the year when they're comfortable, but you have to come in um, ready to go from day one. Because the place is up for grabs, you know, there's no, it's not high school where the seniors play or the juniors play, it's the best player will play. Yeah, uh, the coach is gonna play the best team that gives them the chance mm -hmm. uh, to, to be successful. And, and the coach is, is going to truly want a very, very competitive environment for every position. So the harder you work, it's gonna force everybody else to work harder and you want guys duking it out for those spots. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so the next question is for you guys in high school between the ages of 13 and 17. And so my question is for players in high school between those ages, 13 to 17, what should they be doing to get on the radar of a college coach or a college they want to go to both on and off the field? Well, kind of a loaded question, but what I would say First and foremost, they need to take care of their studies. So academically, basically all the schools are gonna look at determine whether they get in based off their academics. Mm -hmm. So they need to be doing well with their GPA for high school and then they need to attempt to score well with, with the standardized SATs, tests as yeah. SATs, ACTs, all that type of stuff. And that's massively important because, um, you know, also when you think of scholarships, yeah. Almost all the scholarship money is divvied out um, based on merit, so what you've done with your academic side of things. Um, now D1 and D2 has some money that they can contribute towards your education, but it's not nearly as much as, as the academic money that's mm -hmm. available. Yeah. So, And then like at Division Three, where, where we're at, we can't offer any athletic money. So you can be the best soccer player in the world. We couldn't give you any money. <laughs> but if money. your GPA is in the tank, um, you're, you're yeah. And if anything. your GPA is in the tank, you you might not even be able to get accepted at our yeah. school. So definitely take care of the the academic side of things. Now, in terms of getting in touch with coaches, um, you know, I would recommend. So almost every program has like a recruiting profile on their their website. So I would recommend filling that out. Probably the sooner the better. Um, so even also, as a freshman, just go even for Even as it. a freshman, because yeah. what that will do is get you into a program's recruiting database. Um, and then the, from there, they'll try to figure out times and, and chances to see you play. Mm -hmm. um, and it will also keep you updated with the program, keep you updated with news of what's going on, updated with camp information. Yeah. Um, so all that stuff, which gives 
maybe you a leg up or a chance to meet the staff at an earlier age or get your name out to the staff at an yeah. earlier time. So, and then when you're like a freshman and sophomore, my recommendation would be attend ID camps where there's a lot of college coaches mm -hmm. and that gives you a chance to be identified and get your name out there. Yeah. And then when you move up to your junior and senior year, you want to attend more school specific ID camps. Okay. So for example, if you're interested in Alvernia and you're a junior or senior, maybe you want to attend Alvernia's ID camp. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that way you work with the staff, you're on campus, you get assessed by the staff. Um, and it's a lot more personalized yeah. Um, yeah. than like a bulk ID camp. So if you have an idea of where you want to go and they have an ID camp, definitely try and get in there as a junior or senior. Yeah, and I would say most programs do their own in-house ID camps. Mm -hmm. um, like for us specifically, we recruit players directly from our ID camps. So okay. um, we've landed and signed guys right from those camps. And again, ours are more personalized, so we're sending out individualized emails to people that we want Who are to be your, a part of our on your radar or on our so, yeah. on our list or we've seen them a bunch of times and it's somebody we would want to have and then we bring them in and kind of you know watch them and assess them against other guys that we're considering mm -hmm. and it's a really great day for us and I think it's a great day for recruits to to come in and be a part of that too and show their stuff yeah so something on top of all that I would just I would urge kids to, to watch college soccer games because yeah. there's there's really good games going on pretty much no matter where you live and there's there's a really high level of play no matter what division you're yeah. you're watching so kind of throw out the d3 d2 d1 and just go watch games go watch the level watch the speed of play the competitive aspect of it um, you know there's teams that play unbelievable soccer knocking it around and there's teams that play super direct and yeah. really really physical and you want to see that stuff and that'll help you decide where your game fits in best yeah. and Which then you know hopefully you're honest with yourself about yeah. your level and where you think you should be playing at um, and then you know that can help narrow your search down. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. To find out more about the Alvernia University men's soccer program, check out the link down in the description. Also, check out the Nike ID camp they do here at Alvernia. That'll be down there below. It's going to be great for any of you who are interested in playing at the college level, getting coached by college level coaches, the most winningest coach in Alvernia's history. So go check that out, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>